I'm about to embark on another upgrade. What we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the pickups. I'm going to go further. I'm going to muck around with the bridge. No drilling required. It says so there. There. No drilling required. I've got my reamer out. There might be swearing. There's bound to be swearing, to be honest with you. We should be able to do it. I've got a plan. <laughs> I have to have a rethink now. Okay. Hmm. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. It's very good to see you. Today, you join me as I'm about to embark on another uh, upgrade. Yeah, I know. I can hardly believe it myself, but I did promise ages ago that I'd upgrade my Gretsch. This Gretsch, this one, this is the G2622 Streamliner, which is a brilliant affordable guitar. And uh, I'm quite taken with this, the vibe and, you know, everything about it, really. There's nothing wrong with it as it is, incidentally. But uh, I said when I reviewed it uh, way back when, what a great little, <laughs> what a great little upgrade project this could make. So I finally amassed some parts in front of me and we're going to start. We're going to start today. Um, right, here's the plan. What we're going to do is we're going to, Upgrade the pickups. I've got some Dynasonic style, which are like single coil, original Gretsch style single coil pickups to put in it. Whoops. Um, these are humbucker size, so they will fit straight in. To replace, these are Gretsch Broadtron pickups that are already in it. They're humbuckers. Nothing wrong with those, but I thought we'd try some you know, try some Gretsch single coils, see if that gave it a, a nice jangle. And at the same time, <laughs> can you believe I'm also going to replace the pot potentiometers? I've got a bunch of pots, some wire, <laughs> some caps, all the bits you need, basically. And then, and then what we'll do is we'll do a sound comparison. So I've already recorded this, uh, a, a simple sound test. So that when I've changed all the pickups and wiring, we can compare and see, see if there's any difference. It should be, to be honest with you. Humbuckers to single coils. It's going to be quite a difference, I suspect. Anyway, then when we've done that, I'm going to go further. I'm going to muck around with the bridge. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a, a fancy uh, alley. I think it's aluminium, this. Anyway, it's a Faber... Yeah, aluminium bridge with brass saddles and I've got the conversion posts. And I also, I'm not a, I don't know why, but I don't like this. I don't not, I, I wouldn't say I don't like it. That's, that's not true. I'm not so keen on this kind of V shape tailpiece. So again, I've got a, a lightweight alley job, which I happen to know will go straight on. So yeah, we'll do a we'll do a swap of that as well and do some tests, see if that makes a difference to the sound. And then <laughs> that's not all. After that, I've got a Bixby. I've got a Bixby B7 that I've had kicking around for ages, uh, left over from a previous uh, upgrade project. Um, so I thought, well, let's try this. See what it sounds like. Good news is I've also got a Vibramate, which you might not know exists even. Big, um, yeah, Big Speed Vibrato Adapter Kit. No drilling required. It says so there. There. No drilling required. 
and I know it works because uh, I've tried it on a Les Paul. Now, the only thing is this is where well, it is designed for a Les Paul, but it's an arch top. So I'm thinking it might fit, it might not. So that will be fun finding out whether or not it fits. Um, we'll do that. And I've also got a roller bridge that I can try as well. So cause cool, a lot to take in today, isn't there? This is all going to happen. It might not. <laughs> to be fair, it's unlikely all to happen today. What I'm hoping to, to achieve today is the pickups and wiring. So I better stop talking and, um, and crack on really, hadn't I? Don't forget, timestamps are all in the description box. So if you haven't got time to watch all this stuff, skip forward. You can just, just get the end result if you want. If you want to spoil the fun, do that. I don't mind. Um, but, you know, I suspect, I suggest you, you stick around because there might be swearing. There's bound to be swearing, to be honest with you. So if you want to laugh at me, go and get a cup of tea and some snacks or whatever and come back. And let's get stuck in. All right, let's do it. First things first, let's get the strings off, and take it apart, and get all the innards out and uh, have a look and see what we've got to start with. Um, obviously, I'll speed up all the, all the dull bits and I'll stop uh, if there's anything I, I feel the need to comment on. Okay, so we've got some music we'll play through as well from the previous review, or reviews. I did the review and a comparison uh, with this so I'm going to pull some bits in from that so you can have a have a listen to what it sounds like currently until about now because obviously it will never sound like this again unless I put it all back to standard which is unlikely V-shaped tailpiece. It's quite a, a chunky thing that. And is the B2 bridge. All of this has been weighed, say weighed and measured, but weighed obviously in the review. So um, I'll put the link to the review of this in the description box if you wanna check back any of the original specs. These are going to probably come out. In fact, they are going to come out. So I'm going to take them out now. because I've got some. Oh, no, I'm not changing this yet, am I? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm leaving the original stuff on there for now. Just changing the wiring. <laughs> OK, right. Scratch plate. At this point, I'm just going to go and get a a receptacle, receptacle box, small pickup box actually, just to put all the little bits in, so we don't get confused. Right, knobs, uh, all right, let's see if they'll come off like this. No. <laughs> Good heavens. I can see these being replaced. Well, I can see these breaking and being replaced anyway. Uh, let's try again. Let's try a bit harder. If at first you don't succeed. <laughs> it ripped the cloth. Oh, fuck's sake. Right. Reinforcements needed. These are on pretty tight, so I'm going to use the spoon method. I've got an old credit card, which I'm going to put on there. <laughs> so that I don't damage the body. Never seen anyone do this. I just thought, oh, I'll do that. That work. It worked. There you go. And you can just turn them round. Look. Cool, it's pretty effective that. And this is the master volume, in, incidentally. So we've got um, four controls on this. 
there's a volume for each pickup and a tone, one tone and a master volume, a three-way switch. Okay, there you go. Knobs, pop those in there just in case. I can I can sense which have knobs going on this, to be fair. Right, let's get rid of my spoon. Next, before I go any further, it's hardly necessary, but I did think I'd get a bit of card and I'd just kind of make a, a template of where the knobs are. There you go. So that might come in useful. It might be a complete waste of time, but we'll find out. Okay. Let's start loosening. Let's just gently lift them. <laughs> now, yeah, there you go. And see what we've got to work with. I was going to say. Okay. I'll show you what we've got to work with here. So here you can see we've got plenty of access. Two access holes. It's quite <laughs> agricultural in here. Blimey, it is, isn't it? So plenty of room to work with. And that's really important if you're thinking about doing this yourself. Okay. This is what they call a semi-hollow guitar. So it has got, you know, all semi-hollows have got a form of center block. Or they might call them center blocks, you know, as opposed to fully hollows. There's not much of a block in this. There's plenty of room and there's holes. But um, as uh, both Mick from that pedal show and I discovered, not all <laughs> center block guitars are created equal. In fact, not even all ES335 style guitars are created equal. And um, there's been shenanigans of, of you know, <laughs> stuffing pots through the F hole, trying to rewire it through the F hole, and then discovering that there's actually a hole. And then, well, you watch, I'll put a link to Mick's recent ES335 rewiring in the description box, and you should check out my earlier one. I did a whole series rewiring the ES335. Uh, I'll put a link to the episodes, the relevant episodes in the description box. Watch those. And uh, if you watch all of those, you'll be prepared because we both get it so wrong on a number of occasions, but eventually we get it right. And uh, I think between us, we've probably worked out how to, to do this now. Famous last words, because I'm about to probably prove that statement wrong. Let's get, let's get on with it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Put that on there for a minute. What I need to do is loosen me nuts. Now, I'm not going to bother trying to tie bits of wire or, whoops, gone inside already, wire or string or tubing on this. When I put them back in, I'm going to use the tube method, but I think you know, we've discovered that having bits of wire, it just creates more of a more of a nuisance, to be honest with you, than than it's worth. So I'm going to take it all out. And then when we're ready to put it back, we should be able to. We should be able to do it. I've got a plan. Finally, the first use for my little guitar upgrade multi tool. Where do I start? Is the good, it's a good question, isn't it, really? Because there'll be desoldering required. I'm going to start here with the switch. Came out nice and easy. Star washers or whatever you call them falling off willy-nilly. I've got a plan for those <laughs> going back in the other way. I think I've just found the earth wire. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm actually <laughs> currently pulling them out of the F-hole anyway. While I try and unravel what's what. This is what I'm looking for, the earth. There it is. Soldering iron. So there will be a lot of muttering, talking to myself, as I, I think out loud, basically. So, yeah, there'll be a lot of that, I'm afraid. And uh, some of it I will leave in. And some of it I'll cut out. I've now managed to um, identify the earth wire, which is tangling stuff up. So I'm going to have to desolder that, and then I should be able to pull all the, the uh, pots out through this hole. And my plan is to, I'm just talking while the soldering iron's heating up, by the way. My plan is to, to lay the, the, this existing wiring loom out and, and follow the exact same wiring plan. So replace it part by part, basically, so I don't stuff it up. So that's, that's the idea anyway. Switch looks all right, actually. Do you know what that does? Looks, that looks like a decent switch. So I might actually cheat <laughs> and use that. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to. It looks like, it looks like the Switchcraft one that I've bought to replace it with. Anyway, I'm muttering. I did say, didn't I? Let's, um, let's get the soldering iron up and uh, make haste. Put a bit of solder on it so it starts to run and be presto. Free the earth, there you go. Right, now, let's pop those back in through the hole. And uh, red is neck. And um, I just took a beat there to <laughs> to have a look at, but well, basically to see where the pickups are connected to uh, to the pots and make a little. I made a little. Hang on. I made a little diagram for myself. And just in case I forget, <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, uh, you know, you might want to, you might want to rethink it and just replace the pickups because that would be pretty straightforward from here. Um, you go, you got the neck pickup simply connects to this pot here, which will be the neck volume, and uh, you can see that the. <laughs> The earth connects to the back of the pot and the the hot wire from the neck pickup to the to that outer lug that side. And uh, same with the bridge pickup there. Now I say you might want to rethink and just just change the pickups at this point because what I was planning to mention, and I'm glad I remembered, before you go any further with a project like this. Please check that the pots that you're going to use to replace them with will go through the holes are long enough to go through the holes properly and uh, aren't wider like these ones are. Are they long enough is another question entirely actually. I haven't. Because you can quite often have come unstuck with that, you, you put your new ones in and you find you can't, you can't get the nut on. I'm thinking that'll be all right, but I'm going to, 
I mean, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to change the pots because it will be a laugh. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll make some mistakes on your behalf so you don't have to. If you ever feel like having a go at this. What it will mean, of course, is that as these are CTS 500k pots that I'm going to use all round, they don't go through the holes. So <laughs> I've got my reamer out. That's what I recommend for this job, rather than trying to use a drill. Drill is very unwieldy and <laughs> well, it could go horribly wrong with if you try and use an electric drill. This is quite straightforward. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to show you because I want to check and see if these pots are long enough. Shafts, shafts on these pots are long enough anyway. So I'm going to ream one out now before I go any further. And what I like to do, which one shall I, which one shall I do? Ah, oh, sorry, let's do that one. I like to put a bit of masking tape on there because I, I think it will protect the finish of the guitar a little bit and stop it splintering around the edges. Um, I've done this before, not on, uh, have I done it before on a laminate guitar? No, probably not. So anyway, this is how it is, should go, hopefully. You just literally <laughs> start a reaming. I'm gonna have to shake the sawdust out of this, aren't I? It's pretty simple. You just literally, well, hopefully it's not too long, that rumor. Oh, fuck, it is. <laughs> that was a good job I noticed that. We would have had a hole in the back of this one. That tool's too long. Can't do it. <laughs> I have to have a rethink now. Okay. Hmm. Right. My solution, I went down to the garage and I cut the tip off my reamer. So I made it shorter. Uh, most people would have gone out and bought another one, a shorter one probably, not me. But I haven't got time to do that, have I? Here we go. Continue. I'll just check it. Boy, there's loads of room now, loads of clearance. Give it a few turns. Bit at a time. There you go. That goes in that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm put it in the other way and see if it protrudes enough. It took a lot of men, a lot of time to discover this technique, but we should if these fit still. I think the last pots were CTS. What you should find, whoops, is that the tube goes through the hole and it goes on the end. And um, it's brilliant. Well, it's, it's the easiest um, way that I've found so far. Yeah. I mean, okay, <laughs> we do it this way. <laughs> Feed the tube in through. And then with a, a guitar upgrade multi-tool, <laughs> you just feed it through into position. Then you put the pot on. And then we should be able to just quite easily pop that through the hole. There you go. Oh, good. And we have established there's plenty of room there to you can see that, can't you? Plenty of room there to get the nut on. Great. Good. Now, let's bring that out again. We don't want that in there for now. It's not 
loads of room. Let's cut the wires in the way actually, but it's a lot bloody easier than trying to stick it through the hole. These these pots will just about go through the F hole, these big ones, I say, and sort of just about proving how tight they are. You know, you'd have to you have to use force. Um, but what both um, Nick and I discovered, because we both put Monty's wiring looms, pre-wired looms in our 335s. Um, his being a Gibson and mine being a, an Epiphone. <laughs> mine had a hole there and his Gibson didn't. But what we discovered is that Monty's wiring is brilliant, but he wraps the braided earth wire around the outside of the pot. And there's just, I, I don't know, Mick did it in the end. I don't know how he did it, to be honest with you. But he speeded up through that bit. <laughs> It just kind of, it's fine. It's all in, you know. There's a there's a lot of, lot. I mean, yeah. Anyway, um, right. So good. That fits, and that's how I might use the thing later to get it in. And now, I suppose I might as well ream out the other holes while I'm here. So we're back on track now <laughs> and in real time that diversions probably cost me half an hour and, and, and I'm lucky enough to have a garage and an angle grinder to cut the end off me, me reamer. Um, these are the sort of things that can occur and ruin your day. I'm going to desolder the pickups now and then see decide what I'm going to do about the rest, try and get the rest of it out. Okay, let's go. There we go. So now we've got these attached to What we got here? The master volume. And some star washers. Okay. Oh, we should be able to get the switch out now as well. Voila, that's all out, Earth's there, let's lose the guitar for a bit. Take this opportunity to get rid of all the loose stuff inside. Keeps coming. Okay, got myself organized now. As you can see, I've used my little cardboard template and I've, um, so I can see, see where I'm at really. Now, this is the plan. What I'm gonna do is simply, one at a time, replace the little mini pots with one of my CTS pots. So it, it's it's sort of pretty straightforward and I shouldn't get mixed up if I do that. Now in terms of the the switch and the rest of the wiring, well I'm gonna leave that be. This switch is look as far as I can tell is identical to the one that I bought to replace it. Or it's a a very good copy. I think I bought a Switchcraft one and that certainly looks the same. So 
there you go. The switch, there's nothing wrong with the switch, so which is brilliant because that means I can leave that and all the wiring and all the wiring between the pots and the master volume. I've literally got to change the pots, take them off and replace it with a presumably better one. Whether or not there's any point, I don't know. But I'm going to do it anyway. And as likewise, I'm going to leave the, uh, the jack socket be. So let's begin. I shall speed up quite a lot through this. Okay, we've got a 0 0.047 capacitor which is the same as the one that I'm replacing, but with a, I've got an orange drop one and uh, I, I, different pickups. So I don't know if it's going to be right or not, but we'll, we'll put it in and because that's the only one I've got. And, I, and because I don't really know which the right one would be to use. I don't really know if these, if these pots at 500 K are right for these pickups. That's all a bit trial and error. Might have to take it all out again if it sounds rubbish. Anyway, um, what I was going to say was I have discovered that the there is a, a right and a wrong way around for capacitors to go. Apparently, they're marked, and you can see that, I hope, if the camera focuses on it. There's a, there's a stripe down one side, and that denotes the negative side. So presumably that means that goes to the back of the pot, and that goes to there. So that's why I'm going to do it. <laughs> Looking all right, isn't it? Um, so that side's all done. Well, as far as I can tell, that all went pretty smoothly. <laughs> it was a bit quicker than I expected. So, pres providing I've done it all properly, we can move on, I think. Let's move on. Let's get the guitar back and um, feed it through and connect the pickups to it. Here we go, right, next step, I'm going to feed the switch and the master volume in. And then I think what I'm going to do, or what I've got to do, is wire the pickups up to the pots and then feed them back in. It's a piece of piss, isn't it? So the tubing will keep the lock washers on, show you what I mean, the pots, because what I'm going to do is put a bit of tubing on, so that will stop the lock washers falling off of the pots. However, that isn't going to work with the jack plug and with the switch. Um, so actually what I'm going to do with the switch is I will use a bit of string or something for the switch, which will hold it on. So let me go and get a bit of string and we'll start. <laughs> Here we go. That's how you do it. Uh, 
Okay, and now... Switches in. I've no idea if it's upside down or not, but the orientation seems about right. Right. These pickups. Here we go. So these are Dynasonics, single coil, humbucker size. And I specifically wanted to try these because they were like the original Gretsch pickups. It's all that, you know, kind of rockabilly sort of stuff. I thought I'd give these a go, see what they sounded like. But obviously being humbuckers sized filtertrons that were already in this, I needed humbuckers sized Dynasonic. So I, I did a search and I came across uh, Mojo. Mojo pickups. There you go. This is a little, one of the little goodie bags with the screws and a pick in and stuff. I uh, found them online. Uh, I'd heard of them, so I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll get some of them. And uh, lovely little pack they arrived in. £240 for a set, but they're hand wound uh, by a boutique maker. And apparently it's a proudly a one man operation run by a guy called Mark. In the UK, can't remember where. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. But yeah, lovely, lovely presentation. And uh, we've got some Harry Bow <laughs> Super Mix with them as well, which uh, I might chew on if I get stuck. But there you go. Neck says neck and bridge. And they got this. Here you go. You can see that sort of arrangement on the back. I'm going to now need the pickup rings from the original pickups. I'm going to put these in them and then we begin. What I've remembered from previous mistakes is that you really need to use the bolts and the springs that come with the new pickups. Don't assume that they're the same size as the ones that you take off because they're probably not. And uh, I made that mistake before. Um, apart from that, these are going in okay. Just make sure I've orientated it properly. I think so. It's that way. That way. Yeah. And uh, I think you can see this on the camera. What I've also learned is that the crocodile clip is the way to is a great is a great way to hold these springs into place while you find the corresponding hole in the pickup leg and get some purchase as soon as you've got some purchase, you can take the crocodile clip off. It's a lot easier than... than trying to find them when you ping one across the room. The only thing I find is when you... <laughs> you quite often catch your fingers when you're putting the crocodile clip on. It nips as well. Little crocodile. You go. Come on. Yeah. Okay, I'll speed this up. Right. So, yeah, we now have a neck pickup and a bridge pickup. And that's the way around they go. So, next up. Next up, what we're going to do is we're gonna connect the neck pickup. This is exciting.
I think that's all the soldering over. And we can start going in. <laughs> this is the plan. Where's the hole? There's the hole. <laughs> Get me multi tool out again. There you go. Right, here's the plan. So Straighten it out again. Jack. Anything, I say they say a nut or something, but you know, the idea is use a bit of string and put a nut on it and essentially that you should be able to pull it through with this and then remove this from the inside. <laughs> right. Before we go any further, we need a bit of tube for the tone. Here's the tone, the tone tube. There's going to be some knocks on this. Don't forget your locking washer. Place. Be careful not to vandalize the work you've already done. Still a bit, still a bit tight. There's not a, a whole lot of room. Ta -da! So that worked. And that one's up. Well, that was a bloody sight easier than last time. It's all in. I've just got to tighten the nuts up, screw the pickups down, and see if it works. I can't, I can't wait. Let's see if it works now. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if it works. This is always the bit, isn't it? Okay. Here we go. Let's turn it all up first. Here goes nothing. That should be both pickups. That should be the bridge. Heck. Result. All looks good. So what I'm going to do is tighten all the nuts and screws and stuff up, put a set of strings on, 
come back and then we'll we'll plug it in and see what it sounds like and compare it to before. There you go. <laughs> hey, see you in a minute. Right, here we go, before and after comparisons. These are always quite tricky, so I'll try and keep it simple. I'll try and keep it consistent. A simple picking and a strum of a chord in each setting. I'll talk you through what I'm doing and I'll put a graphic on the screen as well, just to cover all bases. Uh, same rig as always, the Princeton 65, no pedals. Here we go, before, bridge pickup. Bridge after. Neck before. after. Middle before. Sounds, sounds nice, it sounds nice. I, to my ears here now, it sounds quite different. Obviously, I, I've not heard it back to back yet because I've got to go and edit that now, but it sounds, yeah, bright and jangly, kind of like I expected, I suppose. I'm thinking maybe, maybe a bit less sustain, um, but I don't know, really. I'm going to go back and... Uh, and well, edit it now and have a listen. And um, look, I'm gonna play something now. So we'll have a little play while I'm doing that. And then I'll come back and we'll have a little bit of a chat about it and see what we think. Cool, see you in a minute.
It's all right, isn't it? Sounded good. I, <laughs> yeah. I thought there was definitely a difference. You could definitely hear the difference. Less noticeably on the bridge pickup, but you listen to it a few times, you can hear. It's, de it's brighter. It's definitely brighter. It's definitely more articulate. Neck, that sounds beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> really, that really sounds nice. And then when you combine the two, beautiful. Quite a, a step change, I think they say. But then you'd expect that because these are single coils as opposed to the di uh, Broadtrons, sorry, Broadtrons that we took out, um, which were humbuckers, are humbuckers. I've still got them. <laughs> not throwing them away so yeah quite quite a difference and um i really felt i felt it as well it, it i think like all good pickups like all i know i mean i don't know how much of it's in the mind but i'm gonna say it anyway like all good pickups you can kind of feel the difference as well there's a bit more sort of articulation but yeah that might be nonsense it might all be up there um, but yeah, I thought that was good. I, I liked it a lot. And um, I thought it was worthwhile. But having said that, there was nothing wrong with the guitar before we started. And what I was going to say as well, obviously, if you sat through all the rewiring of this, I was really impressed with the, the OEM wiring, the original wiring that was in this. Um, and well, in fact, apart from the pots and the pickups, all the original wiring is still in it. I thought it was it was that good. There was nothing nothing cheap looking about it, nothing shoddy about it. It was all really nicely, you know. There's heat heat shrink on it and everything. So um, yeah, I was quite surprised for a, this guitar. I can't remember. I think it was three hundred and sixty pounds. This one. I didn't go to all that effort because I needed to. I, I did it because I wanted to, and I wanted to, to, to experiment and learn a little bit more about pickups and practice me, <laughs> me wiring. And I think, I think you'll agree I'm getting better at it. So there were no major dramas this time. A couple of little, you know, a couple of little detours, but we figured it out. And uh, we've definitely figured out, I think, a method of, of, you know, relocating the pots when, um, you know, once they're out. So a couple of tools that, you know, you might want to get hold of before you start such a project, if, 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 you, if indeed you ever do. I didn't really notice any hum either. Single coils, didn't really notice any hum. I thought a little bit less uh, output. A little bit lower output. I, I haven't actually measured these, have I? Um, I'm not going to do it today because I think it's kind of long enough, this has, to be honest with you. But as I said right at the very beginning, we're coming back for phase two of this. Phase two, which involves experimenting with changing the bridge for a nice, this one here, which I'm going to gonna get it out because I've started. Brass Saddles, Faber Germany Bridge, Faber Germany Lightweight Tailpiece. They should go straight on with the help of some conversion posts, of course. Um, so next time, it's not going to be next week, but probably a couple of weeks time, I'll split it up a little bit with some other stuff that we're in the middle of, you know, the, the Telecaster reviews, is, amongst other things, probably. Um, yeah, I'm going to experiment next with... Changing the bridge and hardware and doing some sound comparisons, seeing if that makes a difference. And then we're going to have a go at fitting the, uh, the Big Speed B7 with the Vibramate kit, which means we won't have to do any drilling. I'm hoping that will go straight on this guitar. I won't know until I try. So keep coming back every week. This will continue in a few weeks' time. For now, um, I think that was a win today. Yeah, I'm going to put that down as a win. Uh, thanks for joining us. And if you've watched the whole lot, bloody hell, well done. That was a long one today. I think we're running into about an hour at the moment, even maybe more. So I'm going to have a little play out now as well, because I carried on. 
and I put a little bit of um, I put a bit of rat on it as well. I think a little bit of fuzz. And uh, so let's have a listen now as we play out with the um, yeah the affordable Gretsch with some beautiful um, Dynasonic pickups. Um, this is what it sounds like again. And uh, come back next week, same time, same place. Let's see what we're up to then. I look forward to it. Cheers for now. Ta-ra. Mm -hmm.